John! What? Red 7! I don't know what Red 7 means. Hot route! I don't. W what is hot route? Will you just go stand on the other side, please? Down! we call a sack lunch. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> it's time for the Soonerscoop.com postgame show presented by Eskridge Lexus in Oklahoma City. Eskridge Lexus is the official travel partner of Soonerscoop.com podcasts. Now, here's your road crew, Kerry, Eddie, and Bob, wrapping up all the action and reaction from this week's game. Welcome, everybody. It is another edition of the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast, and it is usually a win when we do these games. It wasn't the last time when we were in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, but I would say that this was a win unlike any other that we have seen so far this season from the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, Eddie Radosevich, Bob Presbillo joining me here on the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast, and uh, guys, it's been a whirlwind. I mean, we're sitting here in studio. I had to do a radio show. Eddie's been doing video. Bob's written a couple of stories. I don't know that I've really had a chance to take this all in, what I just witnessed. I'm not supposed to want to kill myself? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I Correct. believe that's a yes. universal <laughs> truth, yes. <laughs> yes, that's not just football. Oh, man, that was... Um you know, sometimes there's highs, there's lows, there's medium. By the way, the podcast portions. is always better when your JoJo is staring over your shoulder. Oh man! Oh, and a, ooh, I like the brown uh, suit that he wore today. I bet he's ready to put Minnesota into the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> if I had well, to he guess. did. He did. He was the only one who was keeping Clemson number one in his poll, uh, and then they were introduced as the only team that that was out of the top four. That's beautiful. He's my favorite. There's no doubt about that. Uh, was, I, it, was this worse than Army? It, it, it Ooh, was, a in a sense, it was another one of those games that, you know, we talked to Patrick Fields after the game. Uh, Bob, you talked to who, Deshaun, White. Deshaun White down there. Uh, obviously, we heard from all the guys up on the podium, Lincoln Riley, Alex Grinch, uh, Kennedy, I mean, uh, Kenneth Murray, Jalen Hurts, who seemed like a normal human being tonight. Yeah, it was really we'll get weird. In, we'll get into that here in a little bit, but it just seemed like another one of those games that you talk to the players afterwards and you know you'll be able to look at the post game videos and all that kind of stuff up on the board and it felt like they lost i mean they basically came in there with the demeanor that they had lost the football game tonight and you know i guess it's in a way and it's not what the fans want to hear but they did win i guess what, he, he, here's, what, what felt ahead. what felt different about this one is how much yeah, how many times have we seen shootouts? Yeah, this wasn't a shootout. This was forty-two this twenty-one. Was a, 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 oh, it was going into the fourth it was quarter. A, it was a, it was a, it was a meltdown. It yeah. almost was an epic collapse yes. that would have. I can't even begin to imagine. I mean, we've seen this game before, but I, oh, oh, I Iowa State won what thirty-eight thirty-one yeah. back in twenty fifteen. Yep. And it was the same thing. They went into halftime. I think up thirty-one fourteen or something like that. Didn't score a single point in the second half. And they had some crucial turnovers when you didn't need to have them. Ten plays, 37 yards, two turnovers in the fourth quarter. Uh, okay, I, say that stat again. I think it was ten plays, 37 yards, two turnovers. Turnovers. An is, is that is that right? I mean, I could just be bullshitting and be you're, throwing out there stats. You're forcing that, me 25 to do yards. 25 yards, even Ooh, worse. Yes. Even worse. Because I, I did write about that where Iowa State outgained them 100 uh 42 to 25 and that and the time in possession was incredible yeah, at the, in the end fourth of the, quarter. at the end of the third quarter Oklahoma had a 474 to 335 total yardage advantage and they only ended up winning by like 20 yards when it's all said and done I, I mean it was just a meltdown of epic proportions and I think the one thing when they won but here's the main thing that I took away talking to Alex Grinch talking to Lincoln Riley talking to Kenneth Murray uh, even Jalen Hurts, to some in some respects, they really thought that they were gonna get back to being that team they were against Texas, against Texas Tech, against West Virginia. Yeah. Like, okay, they had their letdown game. They had two weeks to get ready and come out and prove that they weren't the defense that they have this reputation as yeah. being. And they f they fell flat again. They're still like I don't they wanna... still look shitty. 
I don't want to say they're in denial by any means because I I don't think it's a denial. They're, yeah, they're not no. in denial. It's because just they're kind pissed. of a it's kind of a slap in the face. Like like you really aren't as good as you thought you yeah. were. Yeah, uh, you kind of played everybody for a fool in a way, and uh, including you your know, defensive coordinator who was distraught. I yeah he. Grinch is not happy, obviously. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's he's j- fans for out there. He's just as mad as you, yeah. but it you know he's the one that's going to have to fix this thing. He's getting paid to fix it, yeah, unlike he, you, handsomely. You mentioned the turnaround. Buki was the one who, who well, one of the guys that after West Virginia was saying nothing matters until we get to the national championship. And when we talked to him tonight, he's like, "No, I don't even care about the playoffs. It's just about watching this film, Coach Grinch." Getting me better and getting on to Baylor, like there's no more of that big picture. So it's like they understand, like oh crap, we're not at that level again. It, I I think just defensively, it's just baffling to me because you know I'm sitting up in the press box, I'm watching with my binoculars most of the plays, and you you don't see pretty much through the whole. Game. I mean, like you get halfway through the game and you're like, man, why am I not noticing Neville Gallimore tonight? Why am I not noticing Kenneth Murray tonight? And it's the same thing. It's like no one is, no one seems to be flying to the ball like they were against Texas. Uh, there, there are no tackles for losses. You know, happening left, right. Like Brees Hall was running all over them, uh, and good. Brock Purdy. Every time he decided to pull it down, uh, he would get 15 yards. It seemed there was no pressure on the quarterback, and uh, And then early in the game, they have two opportunities where they did get some pressure on Brock Purdy. He throws the ball. One, he sails. The other one, he just throws it into an empty area where nobody could. like. And and one hits Pardell Motley right in the hands. It was like playing 500 in the backyard and not being able to catch it. I mean, exactly. They have some of the worst, uh, and I'm talking about Oklahoma secondary, they have some of the worst ball skills I've ever ever seen yeah. at a high level division one program and brown played offense in high school it just it doesn't make sense that these guys can't catch the football and you know i the the pressure thing is something that is concerning just for the fact that what did we say i mean this is a team that had nine sacks against texas and yeah, they right. can't they can't get anywhere close to a Zero quarterback right now tonight tonight and three tackles for for loss now it i will feels say like last year they deserve some credit because when cd lamb had his fumble and they stripped it and they fumbled and they recovered it sure uh it was leron stokes that came up with like a two-yard tackle for loss yeah uh who was it after that bob was it oh well i mean buki ended up he was the yes. kind of the guy that like Luke, wrangled him up. He almost could have caught like the a, ball. Yeah, it yeah. was like, but it was like Gallim- a, it, it was Gallimore that brought the pressure on that pitch, and Buki almost could have caught it. Yes, instead of a, a nine yard uh, loss. But same time, it's like I they just I don't know if but they get not- that stop, and then Jalen Hurts turns around, and throws an interception. Yeah, I mean, instead of a three and out, you have a two and intercepted, <laughs> and then they 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 get within one score. It just... Or do I have that wrong? Was the interception before they no, had a chance to it tie it? was 42-35, and okay. then the pick happened. Okay, so yeah, that got him to 41. So they had one three and out before... They had a three and out right after CD, after the defense stopped them, kept them out of the end zone. Then they had a three and out, they kicked the ball back, and then they... Oh, and then... But they, Sean Shaw's got a score. Then they came down in that 80-yard yes. drive in right. four plays in 107 right. to get them to 42-35. Correct. Yeah, you think like, okay, it's it's there's, what, seven minutes left in the game, and you're thinking... All right. I mean, they're gonna they're get, they're up fourteen. Wait, they're gonna kind of get away with this, and then the fact that I stayed up in the press box to chart that whole thing, and it was so baffling that I just had to walk through what happened again is that's mind boggling. Because yeah, what a disaster of the end of a game. Because you're staying up there, I'm walking down. I'm talking with Jason Kersey. I'm like, okay, OG scores here, forty nine twenty eight. That that'll look pretty good. That's the type of style points they yeah. needed from this type of game. And then I go, no, it's going to be 42-35, and Iowa State's going to kick onside kick. OU, OU's going to recover. And they they scored too fast. Sean, Sean Shaw scores with and so they just 335, off, yeah. so they didn't need to do that. So it got even crazier than that. They just they they can't cover anybody. And it's concerning knowing what is 
ahead. But they did like, early. I mean, they made some really good they, plays on their tight ends. They, like uh, 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 Delarian Turner Yell made some good plays. Uh, there were there were breakups here. And there. there were some bad you know uh, pass interference calls. I thought called that because it was that crew. It was the defeat crew. It, which they it interject themselves in everything. The pass interference calling Deshaun White up against the uh, east sideline. Side it's against Brees Hall on the, maybe, the wheel yeah, route. Maybe one of the. It, it's a tragedy, is what it is. It it was that's one of the worst defensive stupid. pass yeah. interference calls I've ever seen. The whole thing though is just it, it boils down to this team right now. If they play like they did today, I think they'll get beaten, Waco, and I think they'll I. There, I think there's a 100% chance if they play like they did today in the second half, they could get run out of Stillwater. And I know oh, that's not going to... Oh, Chuba Hubbard might break <laughs> Samaj P. Ryan's rushing record against Absolutely. Them. Like, there... Brees Hall, I, who... we, I think we all three agree, like, he's a damn he's good, good running back. Really we saw nice a kid play. in high school. We he saw him to, and we were like, he's going to help somebody. Yeah, it's absolutely. not going to be OU because he's not the OU type. But he's going to go, and he was committed to Iowa State that, when we saw him. So. That yeah. little, that little pitch, little sweep that they ran, though, he wasn't getting touched for seven yards. Mm -hmm. There was nobody around him. And Josh brought up how big maybe the loss of John Michael Terry is, just in terms of setting the edge, because it's just something that's just gone away. And then the other yeah. thing people have said, I don't know if it's been a respected voice, but everyone is proclaiming that. People understand what Grinch wants to do. Not that there's enough film on it, and people know what the OU defense tendencies are. And now Grinch has got a counter. They've back. gotten figured out a little bit. Yep. You could tell early in the game, Kansas State or uh, Iowa State ran that exact Kansas State cutback, right? And OU handled it better, and so they didn't keep going to that. But they found some other things that worked. And like I said, he's a nice player, but you should be able. Be, he should. He should be just a guy. Yeah, if you got a really good defense. Sure, I mean it, they they just he in, was a difference maker. They're in search of difference difference makers still, and you know it, I think it probably got covered up a little bit because they were, they were throwing some new things out there in the first half of the season, and you know Bob, I think you're right, but at the same time you talk to a guy like Patrick Fields after the game, who Patrick Fields had, I think Josh gave him a uh, like a twenty on his overall grade, and that's out of a hundred. Uh, you can you can check the uh, grades up on uh, the Crimson Quarter, but it it was one of those nights that you know, and even here over the last couple of weeks, and coming out of a bye, it even more emphasizes this idea that we're talking to Fields, and he's he said it's just simple things that are getting him beat, like not lining up correctly, yeah. uh, missing tackles, obviously, like Deller and Turner yell. How many tackles did he miss? To where the they put Broyles in, they yoinked him mid drive and put Broyles in. That's how just, bad. Turner Yell was just playing. so bad. And, you know, offensively, we're going to talk about all the problems that OU has defensively. But, uh, you know, bigger picture, if Adrian Ely's going to be out for a while, which that didn't look good when he went down. Sermon. Uh, the Sermon thing, you know, there were some rumblings there on the sidelines that uh, I had overheard that they're kind of worried about his ACL. Sermon Twitter blew up because everyone said they don't want to see that replay ever again. I really? still have not really seen it. I haven't either. And Josh was one of them. He said, I don't need to see that again. Yeah, that's not good then. That is then not Ken good at all. Kenneth Mann on defense. And, of course, Lincoln gave us zero updates, said he hadn't talked to. So he didn't have anything on anybody. Exactly. <laughs> anybody at all. And don't expect him to have anything on anybody. On Monday. <laughs> By yeah. the way, the, can we talk about the stupid Kennedy Brooks thing? Like, yes. what the hell? Yes, the suspended running back. I, just, I have a theory that I have a theory on that. Go Iowa ahead. State plant? <laughs> no, Lincoln Riley plant. <laughs> oh, oh, Lincoln Riley plant? You think he went against the grain and uh, like was leaking He just had people DM things? people in the media, so like the buzz started. Because that's really what happened. Like, it was we weird. never got no. word of it, but I had people DMing no, me. I, you had yeah, people DMing I had text you. Messages you had people me. you worked with that were getting DM'd about. Yeah, it just it was super, super weird for that to come out of nowhere. And then uh, he leads the game in rushing. So, uh, and he looked good doing it. The, and he started. And he got the first three <laughs> carries of the game. Does OU? Does Oklahoma have a problem offensively right now? Yes. Uh, yeah. And here's what it is. It is that okay. You need to have a running game. But you also Lincoln Riley also wants to execute his passing game. I mean, nobody else catches the damn ball but CD Lamb right now. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Like yep. uh, the the passes to Charleston Rambo Are have gone. disappeared. <laughs> Jaden Hazelwood doesn't even play anymore. I mean, 
Trajan Bridges comes I in. I almost ran out into the middle of the field and stopped the game when A- when A.D. Miller had a reception today because that means he's playing in front of Jaden Hazelwood. Yeah, and Theo Weiss. And Theo Weiss. That's like, definitely going to be... Dub a, TF on that, guys. That's definitely going to be a discussion this week at some point. But here's my thing. Um, okay, so Jalen Hurts, we all know this. We know this by now. He is willing to leave the pocket at the drop of a hat. Yes, and so Lincoln Riley wants to execute this passing game, but if you normally call, like, let's go, like, I think Kyler Murray threw, like, 29 passes a game. Uh, but, like, when you would call a pass play for Kyler Murray, it would usually be executed as a pass. Unless, I mean, sometimes he would scramble, but that's he would at least have the ability to scan the field, find see if somebody's open, and then if it not, he, he would take off. But for the most part, you were completing a lot of passes with Kyler Murray. Here's the problem. When you call 29 pass plays for Jalen Hurts, only two out of five might get executed because he's pulling the ball down all the time. Yet you still want to pass the ball, and you're getting behind the chains because like, when he's playing these better teams, he's only getting like two yards, right. or he's losing yardage yep. when he scrambles. Yeah. Yep. So all of a sudden, now that you're behind the chains, and you still have to complete, complete passes, but... Then Iowa State sends a blitzer, and he sees a blitzer, and he's like, shit, I got to get out of here. And then he runs again, and now you have no chance to run the ball because you have to keep passing the ball. So the fact that he's not able to execute the passing game every time it's called is just stealing carries from run. Like, you basically have to run on first down. You have to tip your hand if you if you definitely want – a lot of carries, and that was working early in the game. It it was, and it, it was interesting. It's the first time Lincoln Riley really brought it up is that he mentioned J- that Jalen is missing reads. Yeah, you know, instead of just saying, "Oh, that's how the game's going," it's, yeah, you know, there's not there's no, nothing you can do about it. Well, what, he mentioned it flat out. What did we talk about during the press con or right before the press conference started? Just as far as he does not. Uh, and I, I hate to be so critical of him, but he just doesn't think quick enough. Almost it seems yeah. like. Well, I mean, it's like you watch Baker play. Uh, he could it was, diagnose it was, it was snap, everything it going snap, on in the field, make snap decisions. One, two, boom. Yeah. Yeah. And it was out. The ball was out He could get to his time. third read by the time Jalen could figure out if his first the read's first. coming open or is not. Is that, in an unfair way, is that just them having been in Riley's offense for you know, a year, two years before Maybe. they were able to play? Or is it... I don't know. It's possible that Alabama, they only gave him two reads, and they said if this one's open throw it here if this if it's not throw it here and if that guy's not open take off i mean i don't know but i mean this is maybe this is what they kind of saw as offensive coordinators and why his passing totals went down year after year at sure. alabama it's 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 really interesting and you know i obviously they're not gonna bench the guy like i know that's <laughs> no. the, the hot sexy thing out there why why don't they put in spencer rattler that's not gonna happen but I would ask you guys if Rattler was a sophomore right now, would he have won the job out of camp? And Jalen was still a transfer, He's still yeah. grad, still grad transfer guy. Yeah, just say I, that he was still a guy, just or not even a transfer. Just say he's a guy I at OU think, right now. I don't think Jalen would be at OU. I, if that's what I'm saying, though, okay, like yes. take that, take the transfer idea out of it okay. and say that he had just signed with OU out of college or high school. You think Rattler would oh, like beat him if, out? Like if Jalen had been here for four years, yeah, and then Spencer came in, right. after his junior year, right, it would probably be a Tua situation. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking too. Like I, I just, and I'm not, I, I don't think that he's like Alabama didn't make the wrong choice. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> no, for saying. sure, for sure. I, I just, I don't think that like, I guess it until they get beat again, it's not going to be that big of an issue, but. At the same time, I do think that he's hamstringing him a little bit. Like mm-hmm. he's restraining them from being as good as they could be in a way. But then again, like you, we were talking to a couple of guys up in the press box after the game just about this. As far as we are seeing the difference between elite quarterbacking and what we've seen over the first the last couple of years to the jump to just good quarterback yeah and it's just good it's it's not great there's nothing there's nothing great about it but we are slowly but surely kind of seeing 
just and I don't think OU fans need to be told this, but just how effing good Baker Mayfield and Kyler <laughs> yeah. Murray were. Well, it's like okay, is, uh, and, is Ryan Day really a genius, or did he just go from JT Barrett to one of the best quarterbacks that has been in college football in the last five years? Sure. And I think Fields. the other part of all that is is just the fact that offensive line wise, Oklahoma is just not very good right now. Mm-hmm. There's not; it's not a very. It, they're a good unit. They're not an elite. They're not a Joe yeah. Moore award winning group. And I think you know a lot of times last year, you know that group of that that foursome that they're now playing in the NFL, they covered up a lot of probably a lot of problems that just never really were. Uh, highlighted in a way, just because. Although man, they, they were Brooks, so good. 132 yards today. Yeah, and then he doesn't get the fucking ball yeah. at all. Yeah. in the second half. Yeah, like I, I just, I think Josh threw it out there, and I'll find the tweet. But it's just incredible to me, to me, that they could start the game the way that they did, giving them the ball. It seemed like they were almost. Making a point to run the ball yeah. in the oh, first yeah. quarter for, for the first like, time. All you yep. people that have been criticizing me for the last three weeks, I'm going to show you that I'm not afraid to run the ball. Brooks had 11 carries, averaged 12 yards per per carry. Hertz had 21 carries, averaged three yards per carry. That's uh, not a final. That's not a final. Bro. No, 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 that yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to find this tweet from Josh. Brooks had 15 carries, 132 yards, one touchdown. He had a long of 48. Here's where this is the the efficiency that gets me triggered. So he's 15 carries. He only lost 10 yards on those 15 carries. Had 132 total and a touchdown. His longest was 48. I don't know how many other. He had a lot of runs that were 12, 15, 20. Here's Jalen Hurts. 22 carries. A net of 68. He lost 17 yards. Guess what his longest carry of the day was? 13 yards. And I think that picked up That's a first efficient. down. I think that picked up a first down on like third and 12 too. I mean, look, when you have the the play where he does the misdirection and it's designed and he runs up the middle for a touchdown, untouched, like that's great. That's a great <laughs> part of the offense to have. But the other 21 runs, you're that's- taken away from something that is more efficient, a running game that is more efficient. And that's why it, 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 is, more explosive. it is so weird that he gets designed run plays called because he has so many runs out of a scramble thing to where you don't need yeah. to have designed runs. They're going to be there because that's And if you give it to Kennedy Brooks, is. there's a chance he's going for 30 while you're going for five. And a chance that you're opening up your passing game. Sure. All of that. It's a weird combination. It really is. Well, it's just weird because I think that, like, you look at the numbers statistically, even going into this game, it's, you know, you look at the rushing numbers and they're still in the top five in the country in yards per carry. But I think everybody knows that it's it's almost like, and this might be just a terrible analogy, but it's 2.35 in the morning, so I'm going to throw it out there. It's almost like a pitcher that, can't throw strikes, but somehow finds a way to get out of an inning. Yeah. Like, he, they load up the bases every time, but they somehow get a strikeout and a ground ball and get it's out of it. It's pitching from behind, which is go, usually leads to your death as a yeah. pitcher. And, oh, and Jalen Hurts is pitching from behind, and it, the offense is pitching from behind because he's taking away some of the running game. Like, and, and I mentioned Kenny Yorks. I didn't even look down the list. Like, tell me if this is efficient as a running game. Trey Sermon, one carry, but it went for 14 yards. Ramondre Stevenson, one carry, but it went for 12 yards. Like, how are you not taking more advantage? Like, it's hard for me to sit here and say, well, the offensive line's clearly not that good, when every time they, everyone besides Jalen Hurts runs for it, they're averaging almost nine yards a carry, if yeah, not more. That's a good That's a good point. I'm going to go with a but. We all, that sermon carry was like third and 30 or something. Yeah, that's true. So he got, and, and then he got hurt. So and now, how are those carries going to be divided now? Because it, with Ramondre, for wh- whatever reason, they love putting Stevenson and Sermon in together. Right. And with Sermon out, they never put Ramondre back in. So is he someone that starts to become a single back it must and be, alternates with Brooks? I, it must be because they don't trust Stevenson as a blocker. 
and they needed somebody else in back there to pick up a blitzer or something. Because it's that's something that Sermon definitely does well. He became he's the best running back blocker. Yeah, and I, I mean, and he even was the lead blocker on the one carry for Stevenson. Tonight. Can I ask you a question? Did you get a feeling like when Sermon went down, it was kind of more like the training staff was like. Oh no, it's happened again. Like like this is something he's been battling through. Yes. I think his health has been an issue. That that's been my first that's been my assumption. Maybe it's just because we all assume that yeah, because it, of the weirdness with the carries and stuff. But yeah, I just got that oh boy, he's down again kind of feeling mm-hmm. from the training staff. Which is really stupid because I'm sitting <laughs> up five <laughs> levels up in a press box that's basically vacuum sealed. Watching through binoculars, so yeah, I'm crazy. That's just that's a crazy. No, thing. I I I kind of felt that. I I definitely kind of felt that. It just the whole thing was just just a strange strange night. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I I. But here's the thing: this, like this, this team was, is so weird. Look at <laughs> the, I mean, there's no. It, but it, look I, at the, and this is the thing, and people are never going to recognize this, but like. Okay, so they get up 28-7. Yep. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow, this could not be going better because Iowa State's a really good team. I know their defense is better than this, but it just could not be going better. And at the same time, I'm thinking, well, this won't last. Like, this is not going to be how this game is going to end up. Like, OU is going to be stressed at some point in this game. But I thought, like, it was going to be when it got to, like, they got it to 35-14, and then they got it back to 35-21. So, like... To me, the stress was, okay, possession. Iowa State has possession with a chance to cut it to seven. Like, I thought it was just going to go back and forth like that all night. Right. Mm-hmm. And it kind of did for three quarters. Well, because it was 35-21. And then it was 42-21. And, and then it was three and out for OU because it felt like Kansas State. And then the OU defense stopped I stopped Cyclones, and then OU scored and start put that separation again toward – most soon it was over before the offense just did nothing the rest of the night. But it was like the fourth quarter started, and they were already at like the four yard yeah, line or something. Yeah, uh, I mean it's it technically it's twenty to nothing in the fourth, but yeah, they start at the four yard line. So I mean, but yeah, once they cut it to seven, I was like, okay, well this is kind of where I expected it to be all night, but I didn't I didn't expect C D Lamb to fumble, and I certainly didn't expect. Jalen Hurts to throw an interception to give them the ball back to be able to tie up yeah, the game. Yeah, it, it felt like Lamb was trying I mean, so hard to make a big play because he knew he needed to because no yeah. one else could. But then again, he'd been doing that the entire season. He did it with that second touchdown. That's the same exact type of effort that that time it worked. This this time it, it, it didn't. So you can't fault him for it. That's who he is. That's why he's been so damn good this year. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb's... His ability to be great with the football in his hand has Ugh. kind of uh, put a Band-Aid on Oklahoma's that, that inefficiencies. That was my story. That was my story for three quarters, and then it just went right away. Well, maybe you can uh, just <laughs> do, uh, do you save it because it'll probably be able to be used at some point again this season because I don't think this thing is going to just get turned around overnight. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, even if they – let's say – Let's say they finish this thing out and they'd won like 49 28. That oh, would, everybody's saying what a great win that was. I mean, that is, it's like, okay, well, it wasn't perfect, but they've shown Bingo. the ability to turn it around Absolutely. from what happened Bingo. in Kansas State. Absolutely. But that fourth quarter, and I think Alex Grinch said this, which I, I think he's kind of honed in on several times, and I believe it. Like, this team is bad. Like, Kansas State, what they do? They got up 10 0. This team is bad at playing with prosperity and he said yeah it's like do we let the offense carry the day like do we know like the offense has got like is gonna carry us no no matter what we do anytime west virginia i mean they got it they got out really fast they started well uh west virginia went for that fourth that punt the fake punt and then they went for it on fourth down they go score and all of a sudden they've got 14 points when it should have been like 35 nothing at halftime. Or what it's like does the scoreboard dictate our effort? I, yeah. I think yeah. that's, yeah, that's how what he phrased he said, it. Yeah. Is is that just a product of and I don't I guess I got to be careful how I put this, but is that just kind of the product of the 
transformation that he's undertaking as far as a mentality of not being losers in a way like and i, I know think that a, like, i think it's a product of of all these guys growing up on a team that was used to being in shootouts sure like they they someone was going to save their ass yeah eventually they so were always even getting if bailed they out sucked, even yeah. if they got even if they it was going to yeah. work out yeah and now you don't have that other side of it as far as an offense that can just every time they touch the ball, you go out there and think, okay, well, how? I mean, it's not a matter of if they're going to score; it's how many plays it's going to take. But I mean, it's it's what is OU now? Are they seven and one or eight and one? Eight and one. Eight and one. It's nine weeks in, and we spent so much time in the preseason back in the spring, uh, at the start of the season, talking about this team's culture and changing the culture and all that, and it 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 was. A process, and we knew it was going to be a process. But I didn't think we'd be here nine weeks saying, "Wow, that they really do have a culture problem." Still, I, I, it, they 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 are not a team that has developed an attitude of dominance. No, and I'm I'm sure that Josh is going to listen back to this and be screaming at the at his computer. But it, I mean, he's right. It's like I don't think that we really, and I think we do, but. I don't think as a whole people realize like how terrible they were a year ago. Like historically bad defense. Yeah. And you could say that for the last couple of years. Yeah, two years really. So it just they're they're trying to develop this mentality and this culture on that side of the football, but they A are inconsistent in in being able to produce that because I don't think that they have elite talent on that side of the football. And be, or the best players they have don't show up, which I think has yeah. been a problem the last two where, weeks. Where yeah. the heck is that Texas game? Where, where's that defense? You guys be able to tell me better from uh, watching from above, but, I mean, just the lack of pressure, is it just coming down to guys not making plays, like the front seven, those defensive linemen not being able to beat the guy in front of them to get after the quarterback? Or did they, like, like remember the Texas game, they... They drew up some of the most, I thought, some of the most um, unique blitzes as far as like yeah. they were, they were oh, bringing yeah. Del- Turner like Pat Yell Pat down Fields or Pat yeah. Fields down or bringing a cornerback in. And, you know, I guess in a way, if they try that right now, then it all of a sudden they bust a play and it's a 70 yard touchdown the yeah. other way. Well, here's kind of what I saw. And it's not that they're incapable of, of like Ronnie Perkins or somebody bringing pressure. But when it's only one person, like it was a lot tonight, like Brock Purdy can just sidestep that guy. Yeah. And he's good enough to stay in the pocket and keep his eyes downfield and make that play. It was never, there were very few times where he got collapsed on in the pocket. It was usually guys running past him on one side uh, or sending a blitz that got picked up where he would just sidestep out of the pocket and everybody would pass him by, and then he would decide, am I going to throw it or am I going to run? And they took out Jalen Redmond mid-drive because of one of those things where people aren't keeping their their edge. They're overrunning. They're trying to do too much. Yeah. And I think that's something that Josh said on Twitter, too. I think we're all seeing it. People are trying to do too much instead of focusing on the basics like Pat Fields was mentioning, just doing their own job. You do yours, all 11 of you, you're going to be fine. When you start trying to overcompensate, that's when the issue. Yeah, when you when really you beat down. when you beat the left tackle over his right shoulder, and you're past him, and you decide to run all the way around to, to the other side, and you just leave that whole yep. side open for Brock Purdy to just step up and run through. It's like you you saw some of that. I just don't understand how that happens. And I guess that's why I never played football at a high level, and well, obviously it was because I the talent situation was. You were also an offensive line, weren't you? You were never a yeah. rusher, right? But it just it, it it I don't understand how I mean, you they can look so good for like six weeks and then all of a sudden they Well it's like how it. do you not how do you not hit a quarterback or how do you hit a quarterback when he's sliding? Sometimes it's just what you've always done, it's your instinct. Yeah, it just happens. It And you've seen it, enough high school football to know that most of those guys that are that good get to do whatever they want. They sure. don't have to follow a lot of rules. Would it be fair to say that this team, from what I've seen, and I guess it would kind of go against it because they did technically come up with a play in the fourth in the on yeah. the two point conversion, yeah. basically save their season. But 
and they, shut them down on third or first and goal from the four or whatever it was. Yeah, uh, and it helped that it seemed like every time Iowa State got across the fifty yard line, they'd get three or four false starts or yeah, boy, holding a calls. A lot of penalties in the fourth quarter. By the way, the holding call that got. Uh, that they waved off in the fourth quarter. Oh my against god! Against Motley, yes. I just don't even. I don't how understand do you wave how that off. Like, like, did he say that he? I don't. He I, didn't say anything. He just said there's no foul on the play. No, but like, how? What? What was the conversation in the in the in the referee yeah, huddle? No shit. Like, like, how do you? That was so he had bad. Him between the numbers, I mean, is that the best that they at, could come up was, with? Or something? It was at that point that the I think the fans in the stadium that were still there were like. All right, anytime this asshole talks, we're booing him. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't matter what it Defee didn't, said. Yeah, Defee could have given 15, 15 unsportsmanlike conduct penalties to Iowa State, and they still would have booed him. But what I was going to say is, like, I this group does not handle adversity well. And when you look at the rest of the schedule and they have games in Waco and Stillwater coming up, that's really concerning because they're gonna there's going to be adversity – Next weekend in Waco, there's going to be adversity in Stillwater. Hell, TCU coming in here. I mean, they're they, going. Yeah, they're, they're. I mean, they terrible. they do not handle adversity well, and I, in a way, that's a little surprising to me, for a team that has had as much success as they've had, and maybe it's because of the, the success, is a reason why they haven't they haven't faced a whole lot of adversity over the last five years. But in a way, they have because they were always able. to to pick themselves up off the shit show that was the defense. So it's yeah. it's a it's it's kind of a you know, I I told you guys before we started, before we sat down, it's like sometimes it's almost like would it have been better if this team would have lost because You can't say that on the pod. I can't. <laughs> no. We we have sponsors, man. That's one of those things that we only share internally. <laughs> oh, okay. Well then forget that I said that because no, you can say it. It's just people won't understand it. I mean, no one. Very I, few people will agree. Of I mean, course, I'm not saying that I think that they should have lost or that it would have been a good thing if they lost. But I do think in the long run, when you're creating a culture or a mentality, like you got to you got to learn from your mistakes. And they're obviously not learning from yeah. the mistakes. But in the in one fail swoop, you have now destroyed all your credibility because you were the one guy that everybody celebrated when we got in that big fight about there's no way OU's missing the playoffs if they go undefeated. Well, I mean, that, that's Everybody a fact. was on your side. Now you have said it would be better if they lost. Well, now that they People have a loss. People don't understand now that. Now that they have a loss, yeah. <laughs> no. You're just saying, what you're really saying is it would have been better to just put us out of our misery. Sure, yeah. I think that's yeah. probably a better way to say it, yeah. yeah. Still going to write the Tuesday playoff story. They're still going to be in the top ten. Does... Penn State fall below them. Does, does Minnesota pass jump them? Bump? I mean, there are. I don't think Minnesota Baylor will make a jump top, from seventeen up to. You don't think? I I, I assume Minnesota be, has to play Iowa, Wisconsin, um, North uh, Northwestern. Is there? Is that the, if you're a big Minnesota one. fan, you better have a big week because they're not going to be a story in about a month. Well, oh, look, I, I here's what people don't want to hear. It's what I believe. Ohio State and LSU are clearly the two best teams in the country. Oh, they're they're, they're I, those I think two, it's those two teams and everybody else, and we saw I've, that today even more. And Ohio it, State beat a terrible Maryland team. They scored seventy three points though. It, it did onside kicks too. Did they that, they were up twenty one nothing. Oh did boy. onside kick in the first quarter. <laughs> I'm gonna like, say this: it is Chase possible. Young revenge. Yeah, it is possible. OU versus Ohio State or LSU this year. Is a bigger match, a bigger mismatch than any playoff matchup they've had to date. That's saying something. Alabama, Clemson, and uh, Georgia. Well, now that you're, now that we've seen that this whatever this is for two weeks in With a row, what I'm seeing in the or last two of the weeks, last yeah. three weeks, two, the last two times they've taken a field, it's a complete joke that we're even talking about this team it in is. a playoff. But. If technically, they, let's say they're going to be Baylor. I mean, it's, oh no, like, no. It's technically, be, it, it's one of those things. It's like now everybody's against them, and they're going to go bunker mentality. Yeah. It's championship November, Eight, like, eighteen in a row. Yeah, I in mean, November. It just, come on. Let, I was hoping they'd play well just so oh you could open comments back up on their championship November Instagram videos. Still closed. Yeah, still closed. <laughs> 
they're going to be closed until they beat unless they beat Baylor they're going to remain closed yeah and that's probably the way it should be right i mean i, I they should have started this week with Ch- like to start that during the bye week after coming off a loss just made people hate them yeah mm. but here's the thing they're going to play saturday night abc game, game day. day is going to be there and we know that this is a perception business yep. with the, with the playoff committee. If they go in, if if they can get their asses whatever turned around, get their heads out, whatever you however you want to term it, and go in there and play well against Baylor, and that defense look like it did against Texas, and they get after Charlie Brewer uh, and Jalen Hurts, you know, has four hundred yards of total offense, and and they win by let's say fourteen. People are going to be like, are they not a top four team? It's going to, it'll happen. Eddie's just smiling over here. <laughs> the, I mean, I'm just doing a theoretical. I, what I, I agree. Know, though. Now, I I'm not saying that's reality because reality is probably they go in and continue to struggle defensively and make Baylor look like a better defensive team or an offensive team. Like TCU made them look like Baylor trash looked terrible. Yeah. West Virginia made them. Texas and Tech by the way, their offensive like line is not good. So if you can't get pressure against Baylor's offensive right. line, you have problems. And I thought Brewer hurt his shoulder on that touchdown run in double overtime. I thought overtime. he had a concussion is what but I thought. <laughs> he was back he out there. He got his ass kicked today. Denzel Mims is going to eat someone alive. You guarantee yeah, that. Who's it going to be? Like, who, want, who wants it? <laughs> Somebody's getting their ass and whooped on Saturday. Have, they still have the Platt kid there, too. He's killed OU before. Yeah. Yep. It was It was a weird... It was just a weird football day. I mean, it, it was good for OU. It was. At the same time... Oh, everything OU was good until, themselves like... themselves no favors when they had their own opportunity. Yeah, everything was good until about oh, you 10.30. <laughs> exactly. Until four hours into that game, because that's about when the fourth quarter started. <laughs> Yeah, it was a long game. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I know that people want to turn this thing on, and we're supposed to give them some kind of answers on what has happened. But I'm kind of with with everybody else. It's like it's baffling. It is baffling. They you, they couldn't be more. In a way, they're. I mean, they're getting worse. We, every week, they've gotten worse defensively. Every week, they've almost gotten worse. I would say they were worse last week because they made zero plays last week. They had zero chance of stopping Kansas Oh, State yeah. The uh, they got off the field. They got off the field on a couple yeah. third downs tonight. They were 0 of 4 in the first half. Their yeah. third down percentages third yeah. were not great. That was what was weird about this game. Like, it was like 2 of 9 or something uh, going into the going into halftime. Like, their, and their yards per play were high. That 40-yard touchdown pass where Jaden Davis just whiffed on his guy. I mean, that might be the only really horrible, horrible, you know, just play they made all night. Yeah. Other than the tight ends and catching Shaw and, and, and Kolar's touchdowns were not probably Those big-bodied wide receivers kill them. But, I mean, that's probably pretty predictable and when you're throwing the, out a five, the pet a five waves, two nickelback. Well, and Petway is a massive human being. He's the guy that Buki was fighting with that got the personal foul against. And I couldn't tell what was like something really bad happened there because they were still fighting. The refs had to come separate him, and then they started. And then Parnell Motley comes over and he's fighting with Petway, and like Buki's like pulling stuff out of his helmet and stuff and throwing on the like it's. Like, I don't know if his helmet broke or what the hell was. It was weird. I understand that there's a certain edge that you need to play with when you're playing defense, mm-hmm. and there's like a certain mentality that you need to have. But I think I'm I'm very very close to having a full Eddie Radosvich meltdown the next time I see somebody celebrate after. A, a pass, they didn't do anything? Or just doing their job. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hate the crossing the arms <laughs> that DBs do when they had absolutely nothing to do with I never defending turned, a pass. I never turned and looked for the yeah. ball. And and I'm not like, or the quarterback just threw it 15 yeah. yards <laughs> over the guy's head. I'm, like, I'm not trying to like call these guys out either because I know they're, I understand they're college kids. They're having fun out there. 
and that's kind of what they're doing. Like, but is your name Winfield? Do you play for Minnesota? Because if you don't, <laughs> I don't give it. I don't think I don't want to hear about how great you are. That's You're, the only guy that deserves to be to be praised right now. There's not a goddamn All American on that side of the ball right now. No, like just make the play. Kenneth Murray has played. He just became a Buckus semifinalist. He has played himself out of out that of the it. last yeah. two weeks. Yep. Like, make you made the play. Congratulations. Get your ass back and do it again. That that's what will impress me. I just, <laughs> I'm 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 a little sick of it. <laughs> I'm a little sick of it. It's not a drunk pod, but it's starting to get an ang- to an angry well, one. We're kind of used to doing drunk pods after Iowa State games. <laughs> in I moment. know. Was that that was the there's a lot of there, there was some was similarities. A lot there. of people yeah. asking for it too. Like it's a two year an- uh, oh, anniversary. They, it's time. I think it's very clear that, and I think we would all agree that Oklahoma has a little bit of an Iowa State problem. Yeah, Matt Campbell and, but does only a great in job. Norman, I thought, strangely enough, well, you remember last year, Cybert had to kick that field goal to make it by ten with two with two minutes left. It was close there when they were blowing them out early, and then Butler took took over yeah. and made that a game. So uh, we do have to do uh, a little something because there were some good moments from tonight's game. Uh, it's just the ending was not particularly great, but let's uh, let's do this real quick. Eskridge Lexus is all about embracing the best. That's why they are the official travel partner of the Soonerscoop.com podcasts. So it's time for us to recognize the Sooners best with our Eskridge Lexus player of the game. All right, I don't think this is going to be a hard decision because uh, when we started the podcast, we praised one person more than anyone else, and that's because uh, OU has one major game changer on their team, no matter what. Not in the punt return game. Not in the punt return. Boy, Iowa State's really solid on special teams. He took some hits. And Trey Brown did, too. I thought he broke his neck. On the punt. Oh, they, I know. Uh, waved off the targeting. Off. Yeah. That should have been waved off. We both I didn't we think both it was targeted. Yeah, if, you that your, targeted. if you put your neck he down He leaned like that, down yeah. into the guy yeah. who was shooting for his legs, basically. Yeah. But, no, I think C. Lamb's got to be our player of the game for yeah. Eskridge Alexis. Absolutely. Uh, that I think 63 yarder that he forward, had was we should amazing. Just, this, we should just name the player of the week. Or player of the game, the C.D. Lamb player of the week award, or player of the game award. C.D. Lamb player of the week. Even though he can't get any money from it. Until further notice, we're naming. Actually, Ed, you should you should give C.D. Alexis like for a week after he's done. Do it this week. Who cares? (laughs) They're not going to play. When he's uh, when he's going through draft, let's get C.D. uh, Ed Ed. Eskridge Lexus. Well, yeah, I mean that first touchdown, the way he contorted his body to catch it, and then the second one, the the run after the catch. I mean, he can do it any which way, or the just the so, block, the spring. So Brooks. shocked when he let himself get stripped of the football. Yeah, I mean, it I was. Believe what? That. <laughs> what the heck? And it was wasn't it Baker that fumbled in twenty fifteen? It was uh, Baker and Sermon on a exchange. Okay, yeah, but I mean that was the game. CD got knocked out. He yes. messed up his collarbone. Yep. In the red zone, too, wasn't it? He was Not diving a for a touchdown. He yeah. dove for the touchdown. Or the fumble, though. Oh, oh. the mesh. Yeah, yeah. With Sermon and Baker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in the red zone. Yep. yep. Yeah. And that was the only really score opportunity they had in the second half, and they screwed it up. Were you surprised that uh, Riley said that he thought that was the best first half? Yeah, That I the first was. half was the best performance they've had offensively? I was, yeah. That he's had since he, he was arrived just trying to say that's the best performance against a good defense. I think yeah, is what he was saying. That's the respect Let's face it, they he haven't has. played a whole yep. lot of great defenses, and he he knows that they're. I mean, it's not going to make waves. It, it it was impressive what they did offensively. I just can't get over the whole you know the running back thing and the not throwing to you know more receivers. I just I think there's a I, Eddie. I would say this. I don't think OU OU has a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Iowa State to me is is not the least of their concerns, but like they've got a Jalen Hurts problem, they've got a they've got a Kenny Kenneth Murray problem, they've got a, a Neville Gallimore problem. Now I mean, look at three seventy four in the first half. Maybe Riley wasn't as crazy. 
Three seven. Yeah. I mean, that was thirty five points, three seventy four on that defense. Yeah. I mean, OSU needed a lot of turnovers to make that game. Yeah, Brock Purdy threw. But three, you know what? Think, you know right? what they did though. They o- caught Oklahoma him. State. They caught him. <laughs> they were also getting pressure on his in his face, and maybe so we, maybe it's just not there. I don't know what I don't know what the answer is. Like they need they need Neville Gallimore. They need Ronnie Perkins. They need uh, whoever Marquis o- Marquess Overton. He played, I thought, pretty good when he came in tonight. He's the only one that's playing well yeah. up front. It seems yeah. like those guys just and, and Dylan Fod Matu is no show as well. I, Does he even get him, in? No, no he, he doesn't even get in. Yeah. Put him and Jalen Redmond on a milk carton. Yep, stock down. Oh, stock way down. Like Jaden Hazelwood stock down. He and played I don't know why. sparingly. Yeah, I don't know why Ad Miller is getting run before him. That's a triggerable offense. Oh my for, god! For pretty much everybody, the game should have been stopped when eighty Miller. <laughs> I told had I a told reception. Bob he could go ahead and go home if he wanted to keep making eighty Miller, and he was like, "Okay." <laughs> I go eighty Miller touchdown. Watch right right here. Fine, I'm I'm going with docking your pay then if you cheer on eighty Miller. I just don't understand what's going on there. Like, and you know, I, I obviously. Coaches see them every day at practice. They're going to yeah. play the guys that they feel like are going to give them the best chance. But Every assistant throughout history has made some decision that, one, either pisses you off or, two, you clearly don't understand. My biggest one was Kale Gundy playing Chris Brown more than DeMarco Murray. Yeah. Like, there's just sometimes, there's something about the way they practice or, you know, maybe the way they block or, you know, just add some intangible that another guy doesn't have that you just don't know about. But when it comes down to it, that other guy usually is just more talented and will make bigger plays. And he's just like, I don't care if you what this guy does that we don't see. I only care about the things I do see. That would yeah. be last year. It was Trey Norwood and Trey Brown. Yeah. Until then, and then they finally, look, hey, let's move Norwood to nickel. Let's play or, both, yeah. Yeah, to something else. But, yeah, same thing. This team really misses a guy like Trey Norwood, and I never would have thought I'd say <laughs> that. Well, Jordan Parker was not suited out. He was in street clothes. So was Robert Barnes today. Caleb Kelly was suited out. We haven't mentioned that. And maybe Caleb Kelly could be a guy that helps him with that Asamoah edge. didn't even play. Asamoah was suited out but did not play. It's weird. There's a lot of guys that were in that group of big part of this defense, big part of this, this, uh, this team, and over the last... Like, you know, had, I guess month because they had the the bye week. Has Jaden Davis hit the wall? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a like, little bit. He was out there quite a bit. He's not flying he's just, around. Yeah, like he's he used out there to. a bunch. And maybe he's maybe he's got you know maybe he hurt his shoulders or something. I just think it's they're they're just not as sure as them. They all that confidence that they built up, all that equity that they built up like against a Texas is gone now. Well, yeah. that I mean the one thing that you do notice more than who's playing well or who's not playing. Well, the aggressiveness, the yeah. flying around to the football, yeah. all that is gone. It's because I think that they don't, like, they're thinking. I think that's the problem. You they're, think that the turnover... They're out there thinking. The turnover thing is in their heads yeah, too much? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you saw that a couple times tonight. Uh, Brees Hall or somebody... So bad? Yes. Brees Hall, and I think Hoover, somebody asked about it a couple weeks ago, just as far as you're not creating turnovers, you're not forcing turnovers. Is this going to be something that seeps into... Um, basically fundamentals of yeah. tackling, and you saw that a little bit tonight. And that you know, Brees Hall would run, uh, not uh, he'd get like a nine ten yard carry, and the first guys ho- trying to hold him up, and second guys coming in to rip, and all of a sudden, instead of just taking the guy down, he gets three more yards right. on top of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's. It's kind of with everything. You're not getting multiple people meeting at the quarterback. You're not getting multiple people meeting at the ball carrier. Uh, you, you just don't seem to have those. Somebody mentioned. I thought this was a good point. Somebody brought up that Kenneth Murray doesn't seem to be having those, you know, those big spark plays mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, and that was something that was really, I think, a jolt and really a, a almost like a lift to the entire entire defense when they could see their leader out there looking like a total stud and. He's been far from looking like a total stud the last couple of games. But 
Oklahoma does win it 42 41. Uh, we'll be moving on to Waco next weekend to cover the team down there. Game day will be there. It's a, a you know, if this team wants to redeem itself. We'll see if they can because if they go to Baylor and they have another stinker of a performance, I'm ready to label this defense. They just are what they are. Yeah. Yep. And, and in the pre in the earlier season is going to seem like an aberration to everybody. I'm telling you, they better get it figured out up front, like in the in the trenches, because I do like I don't think that Baylor is very good, but they got some they got some good players on the yeah. defensive line. They're mean on defense and. I think everybody kind of knows the history between Oklahoma and Baylor. It's going to be chippy, especially with everything that is going to be built up into this. As you said, game day's headed to Waco. Uh, I mean, I can't, I cannot believe I'm getting ready to say this on November 10th, but, and it might be because it's so late, but I mean, if Baylor wins next week, they're in, they're in the national title hunt. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Baylor. If they, Look, if they got there's a there's a chance they could go out and be very impressive. Yeah, the way this Oklahoma team is playing right now. Shit, I might pick Baylor. I don't know. We'll see. If Baylor went out and I'm say kind of won like won't. forty-two to fourteen or something, oh my god! Whew. Can we leave at halftime if that happens? If it's like that Blake Bell game that one year. Oh my god! 40, at at, uh, at Farrell. Yeah, or not Farrell. Uh, at, uh, Floyd Casey. 41-12, yeah. where Heifel oh, looked like God. the most miserable person in the world. That was one of the worst experiences <laughs> those are, of my those life. Those are the dark ages, Bob. We don't speak of those. <laughs> and the first question asked was about Dominique Alexander's safety. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, because it was like 27-2 to two at one point, wasn't it? Well, it was, or 17-2. It, it was a weird score. It yeah, was 5-3 to three yeah. for a long yeah. time, and then Baylor just took off. Blew over. their Jesus. doors off. And I think it was the last like big game they were gonna have at Floyd Casey, so it was like sold out. Oh yeah, I couldn't even get a seat in the press box. They put me like behind. I was with you. Uh, were you with me? I, I was and those, in the middle. Of and nowhere. they were like, "Oh, we think it's gonna be okay. You're gonna be behind the fans, uh, but they don't stand up the whole time." And as soon as the game, as soon as not even the game started, I know. As I soon like, as the national anthem, they never like, sat down, so you couldn't ever see the field. And I was like, why am I not at home just watching this on TV? In a really strange way, I am kind of excited. It's a big game. This is a big game this week. I like their stadium kind. I mean, I, it's, you know. Well, OUB dogs for the first time since, like, the Buckeyes? or No, Georgia? OUB. Uh, That's like saying it's... OUB a six, seven point favorite. It's like saying, is Vegas going to stop building new hotels? I bet OU is about a seven and a half point favorite. Oof. Yeah, that'll get the money flowing. It'll go down probably. I don't know. I think I think it'll go. I don't think there'll be a lot of people betting on Baylor. So you you would take Baylor? Right now, yes. Right now, yes. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. I'm, uh, I'm very down. Make sure you check out the website. We're gonna have plenty of coverage. They the Sooners did win. That's the most important thing. They did win. There were parts of the game that were very impressive. The end was not. The last quarter was not impressive, and they've got to be better. We all agree with that. We're not trying to, you know, get you down in the doldrums and depress you. Oh, by the way, they we're just did trying to win. be realistic. Yeah, they won. They did win. It's just I think that in a way the writing's on the wall a little bit. Is it foretelling things to come? Is this a warning sign, or can they turn this thing around? This is Tick Tock McLaughlin. I mean, it's like, I feel like I'm 40s radio guy, like doing a cereal or something. Can the boys bounce back? Or are they destined to continue down that hole of darkness? I wanted to get that gif out of it's uh, poop again. <laughs> <laughs> Basically what it is. Stomping it out the, on the front porch. I always think of the, the uh, yard guys in Major League, the Japanese guys. Oh, yeah. They're still shitty. <laughs> yeah. We suck again. That's my go-to <laughs> when a team sucks. They're still shitty. All right, guys. Thanks so much uh, for the late night podcast. Uh, everybody, uh, make sure you go support the Ed Eskridge uh, at EskridgeLexus.com. Check them out. If you're a Scoop subscriber member, 
just make sure you uh, give them a shout. And uh, if you're look, if you're in the market for a Lexus or any luxury car, really, I I love my Lexus. Can't ever imagine having another luxury car. Uh, great deals going on right now. We drove the uh, 2019 LS down to uh, up to Manhattan. I have another car going to Waco. I don't know what it will be yet, but that's going to be pretty cool. So we'll tell you all about that one as well. Uh, but I mentioned those 29 LSs. Uh, I haven't checked with Ed this week, but last week they had 10 left on the lot uh, with over $12,000 in discounts for Scoop uh, listeners. So they're pretty cool, man. You got to go check them out. A lot of great, a lot less money than I thought that they were. They're not all like six figure cars. Uh, the one we drove wasn't. So um, it was kind of reasonable. Uh, so if you're in the market for one of those, Ed Eskridge, uh, EskridgeLexus.com, tell them you listen to the Scoop podcast and that you want the special Scoop discount. So they'll get you taken care of. Thanks to Eddie Radosovich. Thanks to Bob Prisbillo. Thanks to uh, uh, Josh McQuishan, who is sleeping in and listening to this, uh, wondering how much we talked about it. We didn't say you should really, shit. we didn't talk shit on you, Josh. Uh, so thank you, everybody. We'll see you back here next week after the Baylor game, uh, game day. We'll see if the Sooners can rebound. That's it for this edition of the Eskridge Lexus Post Game Podcast. We'll see you guys back here next week on SoonersGroup.com Podcast.